is truly nothing else like it. It's Major League Pickleball, and it's making its second stop of the season right here in Daytona Beach at the Be Pictona at Holly Hill facilities. We are moments away from first serve between the top two seeded teams, the Seattle Pioneers and California Blackbirds. Both teams came up through Group A, so it will be a rematch right here on Championship Court. And we are here to bring you all the action as we welcome you inside the booth alongside former top men's pro Adam Stone and our pickleball expert Cameron Irwin. I'm Michelle McMahon, current top female pro Cameron Black will be joining us from the sidelines, but as it Relates to this matchup, the Pioneers and the Black Bears, both teams earning their way to the championship round. Let's start with Seattle. You're seeing big things from Megan Dazan right now. Why? That's exactly right. She's played phenomenal. I kind of question some of her consistency in her game at MLP Mesa. She has stepped up, proved me wrong, and played a phenomenal, consistent game with picking her spots with aggression. So my new pick to click is Tyler Loom. Can he transition from a right side rock supporting Ben Johns and switch over to Mr. Hyde and be an aggressive mixed player from the right side. Uh, can he do it? I'm not sure, but I think he has the skill set to do so. Speaking of skills, Andrea Coop has been lights out for California. You had a chance to catch up with that side, and she gave a lot of credit to the scouting report of her coach. What did you learn? Yeah, without a doubt. And the coach, Mircha Mirariu, who has been phenomenal for this team. It's been interesting because they have film sessions. Usually he's the one deep diving into the film and then relays all of that information to his team but instead he pulled together his team they were one in five in mixed doubles and all of a sudden they win both of them this morning in the semifinals because that film session was the longest one they had had as a team coming together making a few adjustments and the big one is Federico Stackstrud being aggressive in the middle in mixed you will see more of that action right here on championship court as we turn our attention to the bracket how both teams made it here to the finals and it was an absolute battle for the Black Bears who squared off against New Jersey in the second semifinal round, punching their ticket, taking down the number one overall draft pick in Annalie Waters. And Seattle didn't have it any easier against the defending champs from Mesa, the LA Mad Drops. Earlier this morning, Seattle came out with a clean sweep, three games over the Mad Drops. They have been resting since 10-15 this morning, a probably more rested team then California, who had to battle it out shortly after that match wrapped up. And so we will tune in now for the coin toss to determine who the home team is, which we will explain in just a moment. Pioneers won the toss, meaning they're the home team in this series, which will matter when it comes to the mixed doubles matchups because they get to react according to what the Black Bears put out. The Black Bears have to lay their hand first with the matchups, so you can mix and match however you want when it comes to the mixed doubles rounds. And the Pioneers will then have their choice whether to put out the second overall pick from the draft and the best pickleball player in the world, and Ben Johns, or his counterpart, Tyler Loong, and his partner, who is typically Megan Dazan. But for right now, it is all women's doubles. Andrea Coop, Maggie Brasha, squaring off against Etta Wright and Megan Dazan. This is a rematch from earlier in the tournament, a perfectly equal 50-50 split in the win probability. The Black Bears took down the Pioneers earlier in the tournament. Both of these teams coming up through Group A. 
general manager of the Pioneers telling me the elements were a bit different that day. Not to blame it on that, but the wind was definitely a factor in that one. So we have more controlled environments here inside the Pictona at Holly Hill facilities. So when it comes to that, things a little bit more equal, but the ball is playing a little bit slow with this humidity. Very true. And to be honest, the Group B was the group of death, and right? all of a sudden we have two teams from Group A in the finals just shows how tight the talent is at the top. Hoop with an early error, and Dazan and Wright, two Utah based players very consistent on both sides very consistent but I actually caught up uh, with Dave Fleming who's coaching this team and he talked about Etta Wright being very aggressive from the beginning there it is right on cue Cameron Irwin calling the future from the booth Etta Wright lighting things up with that forehand yeah, and I think that's obvi obviously the third shot drive, but I think it's more in reference to her kitchen play too, making sure her footwork is on point as well as her speed ups. Miss there for Maggie Brasha, who's been so rock solid to this point in the tournament, Adam. Yeah, tough break, slight miscommunication, her having to step back and go for the backhand. It's much easier to reach back on the forehand side if you have to reach back behind your body on the backhand. Very difficult to keep that ball in play. And right, introducing herself to the championship game. Well, and that's exactly right on the scouting report for Edda Wright. Look at, she's even two feet off the kitchen line, but she showcased her one hand backhand. That's why so many teams are putting her high in the draft stock in terms of her ability to create power. Rasha counters the pace of Dazan that time. Very rare do you see someone get hit in the arm right there, and I think that's what happened with Edda Wright. We'll never know if that ball was going to land or not, but either way, some quality offense from the Bears with the body shot on Wright. Edda Wright was the second overall pick for the Seattle Pioneers, proving why she went 23 overall. Former BYU Hawaii tennis player. Splits the difference. Megan Dazan picks apart the partnership of Coop and Brasha down the middle. Well, and you see the switch here from Megan Dazan. She's just as comfortable on the left. She has a great backhand slice. You saw the two hand speed up there from her as well. And the finish, you talked about this from the beginning. Megan Dazan has picked up her game from Mesa. What, what areas of the, her game has she taken the biggest strides? Unforced error. She has always had the offense and the heavy hands with the counterattack ability. Now that she has cleaned up her soft game, much more well-rounded player, and we're seeing that here. Maggie Brasha finding the feet of Etta Wright. And that's a great location. One of the toughest to have to pick up is the ball right at your feet. And of course, she goes to the off foot, the left foot of Etta Wright. Andrea Coop coming to life, and they need her to amplify her game in this matchup. Exactly right, and as I mentioned in that phenomenal semifinal women's match, some of the best ball that I have seen Coop play in her career, and it's a very, very good career. At a right, goes to the backhand of Brasha. And to your point about Andrea Coop, national champion tennis player out of UCLA. Also a full-time job. She's a litigation lawyer by day. Yeah. 
Megan Dazan goes high into the net that time. And I like the way Etta Wright was very measured on each one of those drives in terms of trying to take some of that pace off but find the location. She had two in a row, even though they weren't able to pick up the point. Nothing he can do about that ball. Yeah, it's the second pump fake, though. Uh, some slight miscommunication we saw with the missed backhand dink from Brasha, and now a let cord, which I think they should have been able to get to. Oh, what a snag from Wright Coop finishing off the point. You gotta love the Coop calls on this one. Andrea Coop adding the pressure, not just at the feet, but then the overhead from a solid 10 feet off the kitchen line. I don't think Edda Wright was balanced for one of those shots. I not, don't think so either. Not, not to, <laughs> nothing against her, just quality offense from the Bears. I don't see how she got five or six of those back. Five, Crowd alive and well here in Daytona Beach. And a right sets herself up, finishes things off. And as Cam mentioned earlier, with Edda Wright being more aggressive, a lot of people will just think that shot selection, so important to know that your court positioning is a good way to be aggressive as well. Tagged at a right. And this is just a nice turn right here from Maggie Brasha. Ball popped, popped up off the net, but she has the wherewithal to also twist that wrist and just roll that up the line. Design worked the point, earned it there. So they are the first team to 11. So Seattle with a five point edge over California. Dave Fleming, the GM, walking over to the other side, fist pumping, and their strategy is working right now. What is it, and, and why is it working? Well, really, it's been, uh, the points have been uh, a little longer and a little more well-constructed the second half. And really the difference now is that crazy hot start from the Seattle Pioneers. So that is the difference. We have the Black Bears uh, uh, getting a little more comfortable with some of the stuff. And as you can see, Etta right there, just absolute champion uh, early in her career. And uh, it's... It's just unreal how quickly she's come along, ladies. I think what's been so fun is to watch at her right cover middle right now, too. I think early in when she started playing pickleball on the left side, she had a slight tendency to get pushed out wide and wasn't able to cover as much of the middle. But she has solved that problem, as you now see Maggie Brasha also. Maggie Brasha, one of the newer names in pickleball. Her sister Mary plays for the Hard Eights. Our very own Adam Stone drafted her in this year's draft. Maggie is a full-time college student and also a professional pickleball player. Quite the balance there. Andrea Coop blows up Megan Design. And I think Megan Dazon was looking for that ball down at her feet and Coop caught her up in the chest area. She was not ready for that shot. Maggie Brasha finishes business on her sideline. Yes, and we've seen several really nice slides to the left on counterattacks from Edda Wright, but occasionally when you go with that slide, you're out of position and quick hands from Maggie Brasha putting that ball up the middle. Caught at that time, at a right handcuffed her. Yeah, there's been a couple times now uh, where you can, a lot of these players cover their midsection pretty well. If you can go low at the feet or high up at the shoulders, it can be a really great option. <laughs> the Bears find a little bit of life, and Maggie Brasha holds her own. That was so good. She came all the way across, bent down low, and then did a little spin pirouette there. <laughs> Yeah. 
Look out, says Andrea Coop. Wise advice because Etta Wright is coming on the half Ernie. Just look at the effectiveness of Etta Wright right here. The first ball gets it sent right back to the same location. She's stuck on the corner, luckily just overhead. The right catches the backside of Maggie Brasha. Some of the shot making is just, I mean, I, I want to talk about a shot at the beginning of the point, and there's five more <laughs> incredible shots afterwards. I mean, it was, how did Maggie Brasha get that one ball with her backhand early in the point? And the, the point continues for several more shots. Just such high level play out here today. Just long on the serve of Megan Dazan. The Bears. Climbing back in within four after a hefty lead by the Pioneers. At a right, the enforcer is not going anywhere and she's not backing down. Well, and I think there was a big time win for Dazon and at a right in the semifinals, picking up the first women's point for the Seattle Pioneers. The last time these two teams met, though, for the California Black Bears, they dropped both women's and men's. So they have a second chance, a little shot at redemption now. Packed house here inside Pictona at Holly Hill. Andrea Coop, so good on the two-handed backhand. You can see the tennis background shine through there. Yeah, a little late on the slide. I mean, Etta Wright has hit four or five incredible balls in the exact same position, just slightly late that time, and a testament to the quality attack from Andrea Coop. Coop says look out again on Etta Wright, who is so powerful. Puts a lot of heat behind that forehand and a lot of power. Kyle Yates, one of the pro players on the Major League Pickleball Tour, plays for Tom Brady's team. Oh, at a right once again, finding the back door. And she's just flying in right now. This is Trust, a beautiful third shot drive from her partner. She is crashing in and being able to create, thanks to Megan Dizon. A frustrated timeout called on the court, Andrea Coop. Looks like she doesn't have the answers here against the Pioneers. The Pioneers on the flip side look like a systematic, well-oiled machine. Two Utah-based players that work really well and play off of each other. What's working well for them synergistically? Oh, making it hard to defend against. Yes, Edda Wright. And I think this a lot of this has to do with her gaining some confidence in her young career. I've seen her play four, five, six months ago, and it was quality play, solid stuff. But to see her flying all over the court, trusting her hands and her ability is amazing. Well, and I think Courtney's getting a little love right now, too, as she won the Unsung Hero Award our head official, but I want to talk about the confidence that you so mentioned because it also comes at the hand of Megan Dizon. I spoke to her prior to this match and I asked her, where is this new Megan Dizon coming from? The last few months, it's all of a sudden been this shift and she just smiled immediately at me and she goes, it was after Minnesota. I've had a mental shift in confidence. She was losing matches and was starting to become okay with it. She spoke to AJ Kohler who said, you got to stop getting used to losing. Use the losses to get angry and so that's exactly what she's doing now.
And what a shot, well placed on the backhand of Andrea Coop. Yes, and Megan's in design, let's not forget here, a great tool at her disposal, whether it's a cross-court roll from Maggie Brash or attack up the line from Coop, her length has really helped her out so far in this match. Oh, Dazan goes into the net. She wasn't sure what she was doing on that easy ball. Maybe a hesitation on which shot she was going to hit. Maggie Brasha will take us back to serve to Dazan. Maggie Brasha bringing the heat and setting herself up that time. Yeah, and I love this right here from Maggie Brasha. She finds the first ball, gets it down at the feet, which creates the secondary opportunity for herself. Andrea Coop goes power and lights up at a right. Yes, and as Cameron, you mentioned in the previous point, and also that one, getting the ball down is huge. We talked about it with Ignatowicz. It's hard to continue those firefights when someone is taking so much court, and that's what Edda Wright is doing right now. Maggie Brasha following suit, speeding things up on her side. Well, and I will say, too, that we always talk about these teams needing time spent on the court so often for some of these teams. They're only getting the chance to play MLP together, but that's not the case for the Seattle Pioneers as Dizon has also gotten the chance to play alongside Etta Wright. Or athlete. Just a few weeks ago here. Time now for our Aura Athlete of the day, Andrea Coop has earned that title in not only today's play, but all tournament long. The former UCLA Bruin national champion on the tennis team has been incredible with her, her performance. And Michelle, that's a fantastic picture as well. Look at that. What a great picture of Coop getting fired up. I love that picture. And it really shows uh, some of the the play that she's had throughout this tournament. She's been celebrating a lot down on the court. Let's see if she can uh, have a nice comeback at the end of this women's doubles match for one more celebration. The Bears three points away from catching the Pioneers. Can they create momentum? Not that time. Pioneers looking to close in two points away. 19, 15. Make that one point away for the Pioneers looking to close in on game number one. This would be a huge way to start the championship round for them. sails long. The Seattle Pioneers get revenge from earlier in the tournament when Coop and Brasha won the women's doubles matchup. Not this time, not when it counts. How were they able to do it? I think what was so on point was Etta Wright closing down the middle, playing big, which is exactly what GM Dave Fleming wanted her to do. He said if she does that from the start, they will win this game, and that's exactly what she did. So game one goes to the Seattle Pioneers. Once again, this is a rematch of the Group A group play. Both the Bears and Pioneers came up through the same group. Megan Dazan and Etta Wright look unstoppable. Next action for them will be in the mixed doubles rounds coming up shortly. But first, let's welcome in the fourth member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood, standing by with the winners. Making a dominant performance there, 21-15. Very aggressive from the start. Was that the game plan heading in? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, they've been playing great all weekend, and so we knew we needed to come out strong, and that's what we did. And it was a great match. They're, they're playing awesome. At a new, this is your first championship here, but looking like a veteran out there. It's very hot and humid. How is that affecting the ball and play? Um, I actually like it when it's pretty humid. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of my time spent in Hawaii, but um, it's just another element that um, both teams have to adjust to, and so I think we executed a plan, and yeah, it was great. There you have it. Pioneers go up one to zero. We're gonna come right back with men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Dulce Vida, you are what you drink. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Sketchers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Back on championship court here, the beautiful facilities at Pictona at Holly Hill. It is time to witness the best pickleball player in the world in Ben Johns and his partner, Tyler Loon, the lefty, who Ben Johns single-handedly opted to draft in this year's snake draft format. Their opponents on the other side, Dylan Frazier and Federico Staxrud, who not too long ago, Staxrud, took down Ben Johns to earn his first PPA gold medal title. And that was creating some ruckus here on the pro pickleball scene. The edge goes to Johns and Loom. However, earlier in the tournament, Frazier and Staxrud were able to take down Loong and Johns, but of course, different elements. We are under a controlled, not windy place where it was <laughs> earlier in the tournament. It is humid though, here in Florida. Frazier with the serve. Right off the bat, Ben Johns with a pop-up chance. Yeah, tough break, and my matchup here is Dylan Frazier versus Ben Johns heads up. Dylan oh, Frazier yeah. playing a lot with J.W. Johnson. It's comfortable, they played each other a lot. Who is gonna come out atop of that head-to-head -head matchup? Just long for Ben Johns, Frazier gets out of the way. Yeah, he got skinny nicely there turning his body to the side, knowing that ball is going to sail long, and it does. Ooh, John's counters on the backside of Frazier. John's just so good in regards to that back hand side, especially that one hand he's able to roll, also punch and flick from that left side. And so 
I mentioned earlier in the tournament, three main fellas on the left side that have a no-go zone to their forehand, Riley Newman, Ben Johns, and J.W. Johnson. And the issue there is that is Dylan Frazier's favorite speed up to the right hip or right shoulder of the player in front of him. So we'll just see if he continues to go to that spot or mixes it up because his opponent is Ben Johns. Well, he's definitely used to this matchup as well, right? The number of times we've seen J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier face off against Colin Johns and Ben Johns on the PPA Tour has been numerous in 2023. They've still yet to get the best of them. ATP chance defended by Frazier, but Ben Johns does one better that time. As we can see on the Margaritaville kitchen cam, we've got you covered from all angles here on championship court. Oh, speed up chance from Frazier, unexpected. Exactly right, and that is not the normal spot that he goes to, but it is the lefty's left shoulder. So we'll see if he tries that spot a couple more times moving forward. Frazier exploits the middle. We've seen a couple of times Johns and Loon get burned down the middle. What are you seeing? Well, you're spot on, especially that middle. We saw so many paddle clanks in the semifinals between Tyler Loon yeah. and Ben Johns as they figure it out there. I actually asked Dave Fleming about that, and he said, you know, it's difficult. You're so used to playing with somebody, and you know what your responsibilities are, but you have two forehands in the middle, so the communication has got to be on point for Johns and Loon. Ben Johns basically playing singles on his side. Have another look at this drive that just barely looks like it catches the net, changes trajectory. Ben Johns steady as ever with yep. his flick. And very calm and controlled in the midcourt. We've seen a lot of rips from the midcourt. I asked Ben Johns if hard and low is as good as a drop, and he said, if you want to lose, it is. I mean, that's, that's what he said. No, I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, uh, what do you think about hard and low from the midcourt as opposed to, to always going soft? And he said, it's a, it's a great strategy if you want to lose. to test on the backhand. And this is fun. We talk about some of the best players in the world continuing to improve upon their game. This is one of the elements that has been improved for Ben Johns, the two-handed backhand counter pulling that ball down. sends that ball long and Ben Johns and Loon frustrating the side of the Bears. And that's a great spot normally to attack Tyler Loon who prefers the two-handed backhand counter, but mixing it up, Loon stepping to his right and loading with the forehand and slapping that ball with plenty of pace. Well, I think there's a little bit of difference too because usually he's playing alongside um, Callan Dawson, right? So it's a different look in terms of what he's able to slide. They're a little bit more of a grindy team with someone like Ben Johns on your side.
just wide for the ATP champs for Ben Jones. But to finish the thought here, as the ATP does go wide again, so with Callan Dawson, he doesn't cover necessarily as much of that middle, so that's why you're going to see Tyler Lung alongside him stay a little bit more true to the center. Staxtrude catches the paddle of Tyler Lung, and we have a tie game on championship court. Did that clip the tape? That was an awkward situation. Um, yeah, he kind of had his paddle down by his hip, and it looked like he wanted to let that go, but that ball well in. Dylan Frazier goes into the net. Tyler Loon earning that point back. Yeah, quick, went went to the chalk, not the chalk bag, but talk, is that what it is? Yeah, the powder they <laughs> yep. put, yeah, so <laughs> he's having some sweat <laughs> issues, chalk talk. I mean, it's day four, guys, sorry. <laughs> Some good hands battles at the net. The Black Bears hanging right in. First team to 11 will prompt the end change. Nice little step in there from Tyler Loom. I like the emphasis. That's all about the tennis background right there on the volley, the step and punch to be able to close that out. A nice angle. Tyler Loon played collegiately, as you mentioned, at BYU and was the pick that Ben Johns wanted. He picked Tyler Loon over his brother Colin Johns, as Adam Stone explained to us last match. Why was he the right fit for this team as far as Ben Johns saw the game? Yes, and for and those who didn't right, catch the right, and we're 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 not playing a men's doubles tournament here. We we have three facets of the game on full display: men's doubles, mixed doubles, and of course singles in the Dream Breaker. So the the all around skill set. Uh, Colin not playing singles anymore. Tyler still playing singles. You factor it all in, and I think it does give Tyler Lung a slight edge and a very slight one. Dylan Frazier, one of the few guys on the court here that does not have a strong tennis or racket background, but an incredible athlete at that. Just happened to stumble upon pickleball with his mom when he was on vacation to Florida in 2016 and hasn't looked back since. 3, that's what dinking with precision looks like, Adam. Yes, very nice patience, and you often see elongated points when players on the court have lots of hand speed, and that is the exact situation we're in right now. speed it up first, except for Federico Stacksrud. But this is the pattern that the California Black Bears are looking for to see if they can get into that cross-court dink battle, get Ben Johns just enough to his side of the court on the left to create some opportunities through the middle. There it is that time. Federico Stacksrud looking for anything to get a touch on this ball. They did bring Ben Johns out wide to try and exploit that middle again. Just missed it long. Ben Johns earns it back there. 
That's one heck of a shot right there from Ben Johns. A fantastic read as he steps in and rolls that ball up the line. Federico Staxrud answers back. The Argentinian not going anywhere on his side. Yeah, that's one of the issues with driving those balls from the back of the court hard and low when your opponents have nice first volleys can put you in some awkward situations. Dylan Frazier with a simple finish down the line. And what's crazy is as simple as that looks, he actually had a grip change in the middle of him. <laughs> that was incredible to be able to switch it and then be able to slap that ball down. That's what Frazier does at the net. Saxrud thought he had it. I have probably played Tyler Loon about 30 times. I have never, ever seen him hit this many forehand counters and this few backhand counters. 13, 13. Just a testament to how much court and quality court Ben Johns is taking. Why that time? Why did Loon decide the lob was the right choice in that moment? Yeah, it's it's usually the third of the three options, hard and low or drop. Uh, drop being number one, hard and low two, lob three. He just felt like he didn't have a good look at the drop, so he threw it up to give himself more time. Oh, nobody's getting that ball back. Ben Johns just too good. Ben Johns just able to create so much power in such a short period of time. He's working with the Perseus Paddle. I actually talked uh, to him about that. It's a creation of his own making. And I asked him, when might it be hitting the market? He told me, maybe it's May. So just around the corner. There's also a new rendition of it potentially coming out because he continues to develop it. Yes, and... Ben Johns went to school as a materials engineer. So I mentioned that he is <laughs> a very good player. He's a second GM and coach, and he's also creating his own paddle. I mean, goodness gracious, what a, I mean, he's a wonder kid, and it's uh, a little nauseating, to be honest. <laughs> 24 years old. One of the youngest players on the PPA Tour. Recently completed his studies, as you mentioned, Adam, at the University of Maryland. He's earned over 80 PPA titles and more triple crowns than any other male pro in the sport's young history. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, time in 16, 14. Tyler Loom back to serve to Frazier. <laughs> Loom with another fast forehand. Well, and I like that usually Ben John's not the most emotive on the court, but take a look after this hands battle as his partner is the one that ultimately gets the final shot. Gives a little come on with a fist pump. 17, 14. Oh, Tyler Loom read Federico Staxrud like a book. Yes, I, I just I just really can't believe uh, what I'm seeing with these counters. This is a new Tyler Loom and the new addition looking pretty good. Just short that time for Tyler Loon, a patient point though. To your point, Adam, how much do these players on the Seattle Pioneers benefit from being able to see the game a little bit more through the eyes of Ben Johns in just a moment? Oh, Dylan Frazier. Oh, 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 goodness. Oh, yeah. Hindrance, oh no. 
hindrance. Uh, Federico Stackstrude yelled yes before. Courtney Johnson, lead referee there. What's your, what are your thoughts, Adam? What, what, there was a question before that, sorry. I, I no, lost okay. my train of thought. No, it's okay, I'll revisit that. Okay. But yes. What do you think about the potential hindrance not called in that situation? Uh, the, yes, it was. I mean, he's not was, getting that ball back. Right, it's gray area, it's I tough. It's know. tough, there, there, there's not an exact for sure way to call that. It's but, unfortunately discretion. Moon answers back. To me, it would be a shame if the Bears didn't get that point just because Dylan Frazier was going to get that winner no matter what, correct? So whether the guy screamed at that point, not, I mean, I don't know. Yes, Maybe no, that's just me. No, that's fair. an easy speed up opportunity and he executes it flawlessly and easier i should say maybe not easy <laughs> i was gonna say that is a really nice outstretched arm of tyler loom right there he didn't have to go full flamingo so you're spot on michelle <laughs> <laughs> And that's just a little bit of a miscommunication there. You could see Loon trying to step back, and that's the pump fake that Adam was talking about. He thought Ben Johns was going to move over. So when you've decided to back up off that line and think you're not the one taking it, that can put yourself in a tough position. The Bears will take a slight bit of momentum and both sides frozen on their scores back to traditional scoring. Go ahead, Adam. No, very nice uh, dink from Dylan Frazier, but I can't remember the last time he sped a ball up. one-point game but that was the question is when could he have had the opportunity to they had to work to find that opportunity and Federico stacks rude goes for the third shot drive oh, here effectively we go. and the crowd at Pictona at Holly Hill on their feet the Bears Tie it up. It's a two-point game. You must win by two and win on your serve only. Yeah! Loon gets the serve back. Loon with the Ernie right here. Good anticipation, recognizing the third shot coming his way. So athletic, hop in the corner.
with a huge counterattack earning the serve back on their side. What did you see that point, Adam? Well, I just wanted to bring up the point about the Dylan Frazier not speeding up or, or infrequently. And it could be two things. It could be a little hesitancy or, as Cameron said, just not getting anything to work with. And I think right now it's probably the latter that is the reason why he has been uh, uh, having infrequent speed ups, especially in the second half of this match. 21-20. from Tyler Lung and Ben Johns to seal the deal and go up 2 nothing on the California Black Bears. What stood out to you the most on their side, Adam? I think it is absolutely fitting, even though he made a couple mistakes on this shot towards the end of the match, that this ends with a Tyler Lung lefty forehand counter into the body of Dylan Frazier. Phenomenal job of Tyler Lung slightly going outside of his comfort zone uh, instead of yeah. looking for the two-handed back and slapping the forehands. Kudos to him on the very, very nice adjustment. So now we move on to the first mixed doubles game of a potential two. The Black Bears have to win this next game if they want to push a fourth and final game to even have a chance. And the only way they could win at this point against the Pioneers would be in a dream breaker, which we would be in an adventure in their own right. As we check in now with the fourth member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood standing by with the winners. Ben, you are no stranger to championships. What did you tell your team before stepping out on court here for the MLP championship? Uh, you know, I told them we are uh, playing well. Uh, we're confident based on uh, all our matches. And uh, as long as we play our game, we play aggressive, we uh, apply pressure, I think we're going to be just fine. And Tyler, you're over there almost straddling the kitchen and sideline over there. How much does Ben's movement and coverage allow you to be creative on the right side? Oh, that was 100%. Thankful to him, I'm able to just kind of focus on 5% of, of the court, if that. And so um, it's a lot easier just focusing on my little section. There you have it. Pioneers go up 2-0. to zero. We're going to come back with mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. Major League Pickleball is brought to you by Margaritaville. Aura Organic. Knock around. Pro XR. Skechers. And Michelob Ultra. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here, right? Are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end boy, Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. My first surgery was a total knee replacement. I ended up with an infection. They were going to have to amputate my leg. That just was not okay with me. 
The moment I entered HSS, the care was exceptional. For somebody to tell me you're gonna keep your leg, it was magical. Everything is so alive because I got my life back. Welcome back to Championship Court. The Seattle Pioneers have flipped the script from how this tournament began for them. One of the early and the only loss that the Pioneers took through group play was to the California BLQK Bears, both the men and women's team for the Bears, taking down the Seattle Pioneers, and that script has completely flipped here on Championship Sunday as we progress to our first mixed doubles matchup. The Seattle Pioneers won the toss, so they are the home team, which means they get to react to whoever the Bears put out, which appears to be Dylan Frazier and Maggie Brasha. So the Pioneers respond to that combination with Tyler Lung and Megan Dazan, and you've been a big fan of Megan Dazan, not only this tournament, but in this matchup. We will get first serve underway from Maggie Brasha and dive into the matchup in just a moment. Right away, Tyler Loon setting the tone with an early Ernie. Yeah, can't go there. And I think <laughs> it's a, a decision point for the Seattle Pioneers. Do they throw their A team out and try to end it? Or do they trust uh, Ben Johns handling the pressure of the moment better than the other team and putting him out second? So I like this decision to throw out Dizon and Loon, who are more than capable of winning this match. And if they do not, they can fall back on their ace of spades, Ben Johns. Oh. Tyler Loom misses the one that he didn't think he should, but how about the nifty angle from Maggie Brasha to start that point? Well, and this is what Maggie is doing so well throughout this competition, creating angles, being just a steady rock on that right side. Frazier goes into the net. Speaking of ace of spades, Megan Dazon with a nice two-handed backhand rip. Hands of Dylan Frazier holding true there. This is the Bears' only chance to come back in this match. Oh boy, that was close. <laughs> yeah. Maggie Brasha just took a shot right there at the forehand of Tyler Lung, but it was just enough out of reach. wide and the Bears take their lead of the game. And we talked about it in the semifinals in regards to Tyler Loom now playing mixed. He just plays men's doubles, is only covering what he called 5% of the court. Now he has to be the alpha and the authority. So that's an interesting shift to your point, Cameron. How do you approach that from a player's standpoint when you're the guy that has to play the support role in men's doubles and then the alpha role here in mixed doubles? Yes, two very different situations. And we saw Tyler Lung stepping to his right, slapping lefty forehands. Now he will be reaching into the middle. Same shot being the forehand side, but it gets there in a completely different way. Just long for design. Another interesting fact from this matchup. Ben Johns and Frazier squared off in the dream breaker. Dylan Frazier came away with nine of the points. Ben Johns with three. Doesn't happen often when you dethrone the king of pickleball as it stands now, which is Ben Johns for the time being. Dylan Frazier back to serve to Dazan. Yeah. 
getting some help from the net there for Tyler Lung, and that's again where he's going to be reaching in with that lefty forehand, trying to roll that ball over the top. I think it's interesting too in regards to Tyler Lung because not only is he having a different posture in terms of reaching in versus staying back, but it's also the lateral movement that he's now going to get tested with. Like that ball was going to sail long and instead Dazan hits it, knocks her own ball out of bounds. The Bears continue their lead. Dizan goes straight at Maggie Brasha. Yeah, slippery spot there from Dizan, who had not tried that yet this match, and she was attacking from a low position, which can be an issue sometimes, but also can catch your opponent off guard. of the dinks Megan Dazan is hitting right now, capitalizing at the end of the point, but she can dink with the best of them. Yes, very linear on her dinks, so pulling players out wide and not missing. That's the issue with a linear ball path is that often it's going to clip the tape or often push too far so your opponent can attack out of the air. But she is doing this and not allowing either of those to happen. Really high level stuff from Dazan. Now Seattle starts to slightly pull away, looking to be the first team to 11. Loom back to serve to Brasha. A miss for the Bears means the Pioneers are the first team to 11. We will change ends. Any themes jumping out to either of you in this mixed doubles matchup? Yeah, so it just seemed as if the Black Bears were so in rhythm and so confident in that previous match. Elongated points, lots of rhythm, and I just feel like they haven't quite been able to grasp that rhythm so far in this match in gender doubles. And as we move to the second half of mixed, it has got to be go time for them. They have got to find some patterns and some energy to get the Seattle Pioneers out of whack. Here's the head-to-head. -head. Between the two, Frazier and Brasha with a slight edge over Loom and Dazan. But of course, geographically speaking, it's worth noting that obviously all these players are based in different locations across the professional pickleball circuit. It is an advantage for Tyler Loom and Megan Dazan to be so close by in Utah. But I do want to mention what Adam was just talking about in terms of energy, right? I think that's something as you look to Dylan Frazier is a little bit more stoic in his approach to the game, as is Maggie Brasha. So you're looking for something to kind of switch their direction. One of the ways in which you can switch momentum very quickly in the game of pickleball is to pick up one or two hands battles going your direction. Yeah, that's a great point, Cameron. I mean, your opponent misses a dink, yay, that's fun, but you're not going to get too fired up or rally around that. So a hands battle, a fantastic shot, really could be a momentum shift. Megan Dazan takes care of business with that two-handed backhand. She is so powerful. Yeah, with she's that swing. Not, she's not pulling anything off of that paddle whatsoever. That's a full out swing right there. And so was that one. <laughs> <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> nice segue. Megan. That worked out perfect. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> 
But again, Maggie just wins one right here. I want to see her look to Dylan Frazier. This is a great play by Maggie. Look, it's almost a little bit of a sigh of relief and a smile as she goes back. Oh, Lou with a grab. Oh, tough miss. How about the backhand extension of Tyler Lube? Well, and this is another way to build momentum. Two fantastic dinks out of the air rolled and making Tyler Lube uncomfortable. Great job by Maggie. Goes for an extra one, but Brasha was so good leading up to that point. Yeah, and the quality of Dink was so good that Dylan Frazier really extended his court positioning, and unfortunately, that caused a miscommunication. Just shy of the net that time, Black Bears cut the lead to two. And this is definitely a point of emphasis on the switch as they are targeting the Loong backhand to Dink. One, because he doesn't do a whole lot with it, even though he is very consistent. And two, get him the heck out of the middle. Frazier picking apart Dazan, had to move her to the baseline, to the sideline, and then eventually upwards towards the kitchen in order to win that battle. Yeah, Dylan looking for a little bit of that drop volley. We always talk about it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you're kicking yourself. A lot of patience from Maggie Brasha, who just worked and earned that point. She grinded down Tyler Loom a couple of times. And this is what I love. Maggie Brasha earns another, and she's got a little pep in her step as she goes to the baseline, jumping around a little bit more. Don't look now, but here come the Bears on top for the first time in this game. And look at those happy feet back there. Bouncing, happy feet. bouncing around like you said, Cameron. That's the energy we need. Just long for the Pioneers. And it turns out I was completely wrong. I said, <laughs> I said a missed dink what wasn't going to get happens. you fired up. And it's the it's the roll dink of, of Maggie Brosh and the missed dinks from Tyler Noon that actually has changed the momentum. <laughs> so I'm happy to eat my words as this match is tightened up. And we all want more pickleball. So uh, I have to say I'm rooting for the Black Bears in here. I just, I just want more. I want more. <laughs> this just in. Adam Stone wrong for the first time in his pickleball <laughs> career. Richie Twaza the owner of the Black Bears nodding his head with the backwards hat there. He has three Major League Pickleball championships to his name. This man knows numbers and he knows how to draft. Although he forgot about Irina Tarashenko this time, his, his anchor of BLQK, the team that took down three championships prior to this season. And I love it, Michelle. We had the conversation with him. We asked him, what's the secret? What's the special sauce? And he goes, honestly, it's a little bit of luck, and you just got to pick the best players that you think are out there. He has a very specific draft strategy. He unfolded that with us on the Inside Major League Pickleball podcast as well. He says just that. You have to pick the best players, period. There's no energy component for him. Brasha, she can dink you off the court and she can bring some pace. Maggie Brasha just continues to show her skill set right here. Great power on the forehand side. 17, 14.
<laughs> and the Bears are forcing Seattle to be near perfect. I don't think Megan Dazan could have picked a better angle on her backhand dink. So you know they were all making adjustments as what you a snag. See, see that shot from Dylan Frazier, but the adjustment here from Dylan was any time that that roll dink is get pressing Tyler Lung out long, he's looking now to close out the middle. Closes at that time, Dylan Frazier pinched to the middle and executes on the forehand. And just like that, the Bears are about to close in on game three. 19, 14. Brasha was ready for pace, so was Frazier. Yes, I, I had a couple nice wins at the last MLP with Maggie Brasha. I thought that I had a big deal to do with that. I don't think I should do my own horn there. I think, <laughs> I think it might have been all Maggie, my goodness, playing so good in the second half of this match. She was carrying you. She certainly was. <laughs> Story of my pickleball career, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll take it all. Causing shoulder injuries across the board, Adam mm -hmm. Stone. And the Seattle Pioneers now defending game point. <laughs> defending against game point, I should say, and rally scoring continues on Seattle's side, but California is frozen on 20. They must win on their serve. Dazan frustrated with that miss. Well, and you can see Megan Dazan going cross court with Dylan Frazier right here instead of up the line trying to stay away from Maggie Brasha's forehand. Yeah. Seattle gets the point and the serve. They're not going away. Dazan to Frazier. Brasha <laughs> just keeps coming up with different angles on every opportunity. Yeah, but I'm not so sure they were thinking the uh, same thing on that third shot drive, or excuse me, not third shot drive, baseline drive from Tyler Loom. Megan Design getting beat backside there. Brasha will serve to Loom and a chance to finish out game three. Closes the door on that hope. That's yeah, so a really, really nice creeping back in into it for the Seattle Pioneers, but they will be frozen from this point out at 18. Both teams frozen, serve returns to the Bears. Megan Dazan is literally kicking herself, or at least <laughs> punishing herself with her own paddle right here. Just a little bit of a missed time counter. This series taking game number three. We're going to a fourth mixed doubles matchup. How were they able to come back? It looked like the Pioneers were going to run away with the championship. Exactly. You said it. We've seen four days of competition, plenty of runs, plenty of back and forth. I, I think that that was the starkest contrast of two halves of a match that we have seen in the four days. Completely dominated uh, by uh, the Pioneers in the first half and the Black Bears come back strong in the second half. Well done by them, showing some really nice intestinal fortitude to dig out of a tough spot. What was it that changed for Maggie Brasha and Dylan Frazier? Cameron Blackwood is going to investigate the answers. 
done, almost looked like the Pioneers were going to take that one. You started to creep back in. How crucial was Maggie's forehand dink in setting you up in the end? Super crucial. She's so solid on that right side. And, and when we worked the points around in the kitchen, we felt like that was in our favor. So just had to be patient and let Maggie work it around. And it, was, it worked out. You always say your team is just so patient with you and so encouraging. What were they telling you in this big match? Uh, they were just, you know, telling me to stick with the strategies we've been working on, and it's just all about executing it. And we did at the end, so we're still going. <laughs> come on. There you have it. Bears taking this one. We're going to come right back with the next mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. Major League Pickleball is brought to you by Margaritaville. Pickleball United. HSS. Circle. Bro Myth Pickleball. Dulce Vida Tequila. And Michelo Boltra. hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. <sighs> plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. The Globe Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. We're back on championship court. My goodness, it looked like the Seattle Pioneers were going to run away with the championship with a perfect 3-0 clean sweep, but not if Dylan Frazier and Maggie Brasha had anything to say about it because they answered back in a huge way for their team. So now we're about to witness the fourth mixed doubles matchup. All the pressure right now on the side of the Bears. They have to win this game in order to push a dream breaker format. So we will see Ben Johns once again on display, the best pickleball player in the world with his partner, Etta Wright, who also has a hammer of a forehand, which we've seen in the women's doubles matchup earlier this evening or this afternoon. Not quite evening yet. And on the other side, it's the Bears. Andrea Coop and her partner Federico Staxrud after watching some tape. Zero, zero. The Bears were able to make some key adjustments. We'll find out if it stands here. Ben Johns with a perfect Ernie on the backhand. Hey, you don't see the top spin drop shot too frequently, but a nice job by Ben Johns. And my pick to click here is Federico Stackstroot. He doesn't have to match Ben John shot for shot, but he has to come up with some nice offense for his team. Creating a little bit of space there, pulling Ben Johns out so wide. 
Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because we talk about Federico Stackstrude in terms of creating offense. He did a really nice job in the semifinals in the mixed competition. At a right, we'll serve to Andrea Coop. Snipe by Federico Stackstrude. Yes, yeah, so when, when, when Ben steps over to his right and it clips his paddle, you know that you hit it to the perfect spot. There is not a lot of room to work with, so perfectly placed from Federico Stackstrude right in between his two opponents. Yeah. Bert alert, my <laughs> goodness. Ben John stepping over, reading the situation beautifully. Edda Wright knows that she's just gonna take a step back and let Ben do his thing here. So if you wanna know what a, a Bert is, there you have it, textbook form from Ben Johns. Sesame Street, Bert and Ernie. <laughs> Tie game. Three, three. And right was there on the defense. Well, and that's going to be the difference maker. Like Adam mentioned multiple times, here is the length of Federico Stackstrew just reaching as far as he possibly can. attacks the body of Etta Wright. Yeah, nice patient patient point from all four players. And I just I just love listening to the the shoes. <laughs> I just it's 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 I mean the Not footwork. at all what I expected well, you no, to say. No, no, but the but the footwork <laughs> it's so clean and so it's so nice. These guys are real athletes. This is a sport, <laughs> not a game out here, guys. If you think it's a game, you're crazy. Yeah. Tough ball over the backhand of Ben Johns right here. Flips the net. Five, four. No. Oh, just wide for Staxrude. That was some trickery from Federico Staxrude. I know he didn't make it, but wow, on the speed up right there, all the way from the right side and then trying to cover the back side as well. Stackstrude keeps at a right back at the baseline, and this game is as close as we would expect. The Bears hanging on to their championship lives. Ben Johns picked a perfect spot that time. Yeah, and also a perfect pace. Speed ups don't always have to be 100% speed. It's actually the change up that's been the evolution of the game in the last year or so, being able to pick and choose your tempos. Ooh, what a grab from Coop. Not enough though, Seattle taking the lead. Yeah, nice. Nice step over from Ben. And he easily could have left that for Edda Wright, but he continues to stay engaged, continuing to move to his right and finishing the point. Yep, 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 yep. Side out, point seven. And I like what I see from Federico Staxard. I know he ripped a two-handed backhand wide and missed a forehand earlier in the match, but he is really making it a point to be aggressive with his shot selection and movement. And overall, I like that. attacked the middle, but Ben Johns was all over it. And to Adam's point again, this is a very aggressive Federico Stackstrude. So you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Right now, it's still playing in his favor. I know they just lost that last point, but it's also keeping them in this. Yeah. 
Yeah, tough miss. Probably the right shot selection, nothing else he can do there. Trying to push that ball over to the right side of Edder Wright. Clipping the tape, unfortunately, for the Black Bears. of the match and I just wanted to mention we talked about Tyler Loon going from solid to aggressive and mixed at a right a woman on a mission and women's taking a ton of court and even passing on some opportunities and being a solid compliment to Ben Johns so far in this mixed match. Speculation unfolding on the court. Are you maintaining your alcohol? Black Bears. The Bears are saying they called the ball out of bounds. At 9-9. And so the Pioneers will use one of their two free challenges to counter and overturn the line call. And I'm, I, I know that Tyler Loong, he was kind of in the left ear of Courtney Johnson there and is still continuing to talk to her, wondering what that could be about. Possibly that maybe the call wasn't called on the court and that the sideline made the call. Uh, Getting some clarification in the booth here. Somebody in the crowd said it was good. So Tyler Loom is getting animated about that because the call on the floor was that it was out. But somebody in the crowd told Tyler Loom that it was. It was actually somebody on the bench from the, their own team of the California Black Bears that made the adjustment or was actually calling it a different direction. Here's what's being challenged. Tough angle with Coop's leg. Yeah, very tough angle. <laughs> Not only with the leg, but just knowing exactly where that ball bounced. And it's also important to note as Tyler Lung was having the conversation with Courtney, only the captain is allowed to have a conversation with the official too, so. And Courtney Johnson, let it be known to him to sit back down, which good for her. That's a tough, tough role to play. Oh gosh, that's, that's tough. a tough ball to see. Man. Remember, it's the bottom yeah. center surface of the ball. I feel like I see a little sliver of green, yes, but I, I, think I don't so. know. Oh, we 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 have a lot of dissension in, in in the booth. <laughs> yeah, split there, decision up here for sure. Important to note, the referees have a couple more angles than we do, so don't freak out if you're at home seeing it a certain way. It is being reviewed. As we await clarity on the call, Courtney Johnson. The call stands, the ball was out of bounds, so Intel from the bench. Incorrect. And Stuxrude will take back the serve. We are tied up nine points apiece. Yeah. 
just wide for Stacks Rude. Ben Johns coming up big on his side. Yeah, and again, we go back to this role of Ben Johns. Watch how far he drops the paddle face down to be able to create that, pulling it all the way up, as well as raising his body up at the same time. That's what's generating that much pace. Yeah, you're exactly right, and that's the deadly combo from Ben Johns for so many years. The backhand roll and the forehand slap uh, probably been on the wrong end of that one about 1,500 <laughs> times, so uh, I, I know exactly what the Black Bears are feeling down there. So the Pioneers, the first team to 11, we will have an end change and a slight break here. As for the Black Bears, strategically speaking, for Andrea Coop and Federico Staxrud, to exploit Ben Johns and Etta Wright. Not a lot of holes on their side. So, Adam, what do they need to do? Or what do they need to get back to, rather, at the beginning of this game when they had a little bit of leverage on these two? Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't think a lot. I wouldn't change anything drastically. I, as I mentioned, I like the aggression of Federico Staxru taking his shots. We see Mircha Mirariu here chatting uh, with uh, his team out on the court. So they're definitely coming up with something. Uh, Andrea Coop, a very, very sharp lady as well. Good mind for the game. So they're, they're going to come up with something. And I expect mostly more of the same. Uh, haven't really mentioned Coop too much. She does like some cross-court attacks, possibly squeezing some of those in at, at, at a right. Uh, but definitely not too many fantastic options to go at when you're playing Ben Johns and Etta Wright. goes into the net and it's hard enough kitchen to kitchen against mm -hmm. the best player in the world but if you're going to be him kitchen you four feet behind that is a very much a percentage is not in your favor situation <laughs> What a shot from Andrea Coop who finds Etta Wright in the transition zone. Nice, just a nice redirect. Andrea Coop able to get one step further, like Adam mentioned on the previous play, one step further to that kitchen line, allowing the angle to go down. Etta Wright finds a perfect angle on Coop, causing the miss hit. Yeah, and you can see uh, the result of her power. Andrea Coop, one of the best players in the world in the midcourt. She wasn't even close on that one, just a testament to the pop from Etta Wright on the forehand side. Oh, Ben Johns. Tough player to counter. Yep, and that's what happens when Etta Wright attacks cross court. Yep. And it's a clean counter from Andrea Coop, but it's going right at the paddle of Ben Johns, and he's able to handle that pace nicely. Too much of a slide from Etta Wright. Yeah, too much of a slide and too much of a <laughs> swing. She just, uh, she almost touched her back with the backswing on that two-hander. She saw it, but a little too much. Oh, stacks rude. Thought he had it. That first step of Stackshrude kind of didn't do him justice right here. Watch, he's about a foot and a half back, and he gets kind of placed off the kitchen, one foot. That's why he's looking down to see how much more room he had. His footwork wasn't what he was hoping for there. Nice shot and nice spot in the middle of the court from Federico Staxford. He'd gone behind Ben Johns inside out a couple times, so Ben was not there in the middle. Nice spot change from Fed. And the trek just continues for Seattle now, 16 to 12.
just shy of the net that time for Andrea Coop. Yeah, it's uh, rarely a, a good situation when you smack your hip with your paddle and instantly call a timeout. And a couple uh, loose, soft airs from Andrea Coop, definitely uncharacteristic. And uh, yeah, uh, probably a little bit of a lapse of focus from her and also a testament to the quality of shots from her opponents. You can tell Tyler Lung is feeling pretty good about the Seattle Pioneers' chances, but never say never with this rally scoring. And the lively crowd of this Holly Hill, Florida group here. It's been alive all weekend long. This tournament started at the challenger level on Thursday. Premier began on Friday. Of course, every point, every game matters when it comes to the promotion and relegation system that will be settled once and for all after this season commences, completes. And as it relates to the championship round, Steve Kuhn, the founder of Major League Pickleball, looking on to enjoy the fruits of his labors here in Daytona Beach. That's a good direction right now for the California Black Bears. Now in the defensive position are the Seattle Pioneers, four feet from the kitchen line. Not the error you can take at this late in the game with everything on the line, but have to stay aggressive too. Tough to find that balance at a right back to serve to Coop. with a sneak attack down the middle. Yeah, textbook stuff, quality dinking from his partner, and he wasn't hanging out in the middle. He made the move to the middle. Big difference between the two. Looking for the third shot drop there. That's a rarity from Ben Johns on the miss. Wipes off the Perseus paddle. on it. Yeah, just unable to put the ball away. California Black Bears in complete control. And it's even a possibility that the error from Coop was from an overswing because she was unable to put the ball away previously. Sometimes you break form when you're playing quality defensive players and go for too much with your swing. Just, just, just what they do. It's, it, it's a game plan and it's execution once you get out there. They don't waver, they don't get rattled. Uh, they, their team makes a three or four or five point run, possibly ties it up in the middle. They don't, they, they don't get flustered. They don't start ripping the ball or, or start uh, completely grinding and disregarding offense. They just stay balanced in their patterns and stick to their game plan and that's exactly what happened. And I also like the fact that the Seattle Pioneers in the previous matchup had lost both their women's and their men's matchups versus this exact same team. They came out to a firing start, made some adjustments and executed at a much higher rate for both of those, setting themselves up for a much better shot at success. How were the Seattle Pioneers able to get the job done? We will chat it over with the champions after this short break. Don't go anywhere. The ceremony to award our champions is next.
And I said, Saturday, no one's here, right? Are you getting this? You get so if he wants the end Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. At Front with Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From with Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Welcome back, I'm Cameron Blackwood. Here at the MLP Daytona, we just finished our championship match, and we just want to say one more time, let's give it up for the Pioneers and the BLQK Bears. And we also want to say thank you to the fans. You guys have been amazing all weekend long, especially on Thursday. You guys showed up and have been incredible, so thank you so much. We'd like to thank our sponsors at this time and our title sponsor, Margaritaville. Next, we have Michelob Ultra, Circle, Skechers Pickleball, HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, Aura Organic, Knock Around Sunglasses, Pro XR Performance, Fromith Pickleball, Grillos Pickles, Pickleball United, Dulce Vita Tequila, and Duper, the only dynamic universal pickleball rating system. <laughs> and none of this would be possible without these individuals standing next to me right here. We have the MLP founder, Steve Kuhn. MLP Commissioner Brooks Wiley, MLP CEO, Interim CEO Brian Levine, and the CMO of Margaritaville, our title sponsor, Tamara Baldanza Decker. We're going to have a few words now from our founder, Steve Kuhn. All right, thank you. And I get to say thank you to a bunch more people. Uh, Pictona and, and Holly Hill and Greater Daytona, thank you. Amazing, you've been a great host for us. Fans here have been awesome all week, so thank you. Thank you to our volunteers. So many people here are helping us make this a great event. Thank you to all of you. Uh, fans have been awesome, but also a true and deep thank you to these players. Uh, you know, these players are working their butts off to get better every day. The sport has been elevated to a new level. The level of training, the level of attention to detail is amazing and we see it on the, on the, the level of play. Uh, the level of play at this tournament it was is just absolutely off the charts. So thank you to the players who are working so hard to make that true. Uh, and then one last thank you is, I think over the last four days, I've probably met, I don't know, 500 people who are dedicated to making the sport even better, who are doing blogs, who are building venues, who are you know, doing whatever it takes to show the, their love for this sport and to help us grow it. You know, we talk about 40 by 30, I think we're well on our way. 40 million players by 2030. We're gonna be the most played sport in America. If we aren't already, we're soon gonna be. Thank you to everyone who's helping make that happen. Thank you, Steve, thank you. And right now we wanna bring up our runner-ups 
the BLQK California Bears. Fed can Andrew, congratulations on an incredible weekend. How proud are you of this team for making it into the championships here? So proud. Uh, I think a lot of people thought it was a weird team when it was put together, but uh, you know what? I think we hopefully proved them wrong, and we can't wait to get back together for San Clemente. And how much has the return of Maggie Brasha been here in Daytona? Uh, Maggie Brasha is BLQK's MVP. Thank you guys so much on an incredible tournament. Good job. Thank you. And now, we would like to bring up our winners of the second MLP in Daytona, the Seattle Pioneers. Let's get that trophy for them, guys. Brooks, do you want to grab their trophy? Get, get a trophy in your guys' hand here. Like we said, you guys played BLQK earlier in the weekend, didn't come out on top. What was the difference maker today? Uh, you know, I think uh, it wasn't our, our best performance. Obviously, they played well and put a lot of pressure on us in that match. Uh, but, you know, I think even when the bracket first got made, we were like, we want another shot at them. I think we can do better. Uh, so, you know, we were really happy to see them in the final. Uh, congratulations to them for, for playing so well all weekend. Uh, and I was just happy the, the team played with confidence and uh, came what we, uh, did what we came to do. And Tyler, just how special is this team? You guys fought so hard to be here in this moment and came out on top. Yeah, I agreed with what Ben said. I think all of our talent is top notch. And if we play our game as we should, uh, we're extremely difficult to beat. Awesome. Well, let's get this trophy in their hands here. <laughs> One more award we want to give out is our MVP of MLP. This girl has made so much improvement since Mesa, made such a difference here in Daytona, absolutely killed it, and that goes to none other than Megan Dizon. Yeah. And Megan, being the premier level MVP, you are invited to, on a three-day, two-night cruise aboard the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, leaving from the port of Palm Beach, Florida, and traveling to Grand Bahama Island. And the cruise is being gifted, none other than our title sponsor, Margaritaville CMO, Tamara, Tamara Baldenza Decker. Thank you. Thank you guys again to our sponsors, to our incredible fans, and to our players who have played absolutely incredible, and our champions, the Seattle Pioneers. Michelle, we'll go back up to you. Cameron, thank you so much. That is a wrap for our coverage of the Major League Pickleball Daytona Beach Tournament. The Seattle Pioneers are your 2023 MLP Daytona Beach champions. The best player in the world in Ben Johns lifted his teammates up for the finish, but it was ultimately the MVP, Megan Dizon, who brought it home for the Pioneers. And we thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. We will see you in Southern California, June 15th for our never next Major League Pickleball event for Michelle McMahon, Cameron Irwin, Adam Stone, and Cameron Blackwood and our entire boxcar production crew. We will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, everybody.